What's up, what's good? It's BQ in the place to be, and the place to be is the Impact Lounge. This is another segment of Moving the Needle. Typically, I would be doing this in a podcast form, but given the amount of content I was trying to knock out before the pay-per-view and the pay-per-view happening tonight, uh, you're getting a mobile version of it. So I want to talk about the Trey Miguel interview, Outside the Ropes, new segment that they debuted on YouTube, and um, talk about the good and bad of it. Mostly good, but... The first thing I want to point out to you guys is that this is the kind of content that the channel is missing, and I've been wanting to do content based on my opinions of their YouTube channel for a while now. Well, you guys know my opinions of their YouTube channel, that it's the shits, but basically some of my ideas for the channel. And this was something that I really think was missing, and and where I got this idea initially from, and it's nothing, you know, groundbreaking, it's an interview. I ordered the Royal Rumble several years ago. It was my first WWE pay-per-view in a while. Just felt like ordering it. Watched it. Throughout the show, they're promoting after the show, stay tuned because Stone Cold's going to be interviewing Sasha Banks. And they're promoting the shit out of it. And I stayed stayed tuned and I watched it and I listened to the whole thing and it was really, really good. And back then it told me Impact is missing this kind of content where you just get this raw, raw side of a wrestler. Not these, you know, around the ring interviews Josh Matthews has done and they're playing grab ass and all that stuff. I mean like raw getting to know somebody. We're missing that because a lot of the big name podcasters don't interview too many of the Impact guys. We don't get a lot of uh, interviews on Talk is Jericho. You know, we get one every blue moon, but we have been missing this. And it I, I just said, you know, if something like that on their YouTube channel would give us an opportunity to get to know the wrestler a little bit, connect with them in a way that we're not able to on television, and, you know, it's just a different platform, platform for them to tell their story. So the first episode was with Trey Miguel. Only had 8,000 views at the time I'm recording this, which is not ideal. It, it's really not. But Impact's YouTube strategy has always been, let's get just as many freaking views as possible, and then you get a bunch of empty subscribers who don't follow the content anymore after that. You're just, I'm going to post my Samoa Joe matches, get 50,000 views, hope we're going to turn those people into viewers. Something like this, granted, 8,000 viewers, not a whole lot, but these are targeted viewers, and targeted viewers mean a lot more than a whole totality of viewers. It also gives you an idea of... Yo, we only got 8,000 here and we usually do this. There's a lot of work to do. You know, it's very easy to, to, to post your AJ Styles matches, have all these views and be like, oh, that's our audience. Like, that's not really true. You know, so when you post something like this and you have an idea what the targeted viewership looks like, it gives you something to work with. It it's, gives you something to build from. But this content is good. It's what's missing. And they need to stay consistent with it. Because what they do is come out with stuff like this. And then it goes away four weeks later. And at the time that I you know, was thinking. I'm watching the Stasha Banks thing. And I'm, and I'm saying, yo, they, they need something like this. I'm like, but they don't have that interviewer. You know, Obviously, they don't have Stone Cold Steve Austin. But they didn't have someone of, of Tom's level. Um, they had some people with podcast experience. I thought uh, Josh Alexander's wife would... You know, she's a, she's a really good podcaster. You got Jimmy Jacobs. You know, there, there's a few people that have the experience of how to do it. But Tom, Tom Hannafin brings that, like, WWE pedigree, working on the WWE Network and all that. He knows how to do this. And he did an outstanding job. Visually, you, know, you guys know I'm going to talk about the visuals and the and the audio and all that stuff. You know that's, that's what I do. It's the same setup. They're sitting in front of the... TVs, the YouTube, I mean, the Impact screen saver. It's a bunch of red. It's a bunch of color correction. So deep that Trey Miguel's head looks like it's just floating in midair because you can't differentiate the the black shirt from the background. Um, I just hit my microphone there. I hope that didn't make a big noise for you guys. So it tells me that the same people are editing the show and did this kind of content. But it also tells me they're capable of a lot more. You know, I'm always saying you got amateurs editing Impact and doing the audiovisual. I've been saying that for a while. I know it's not a popular opinion with some, but that's how I feel when I'm watching a product. Then you watch something like this and you're like, yo, the capability is there to put something out a lot more professional that looks a lot better. You know, uh, they're still playing music in the background. They cannot help themselves when it comes to that. 
I know I do some vlogs at times that have some music in the background, but that's a that's a vlog thing. When you're trying to connect with someone emotionally, I don't think it's a good idea to do that. But the music choice is a lot better than the stuff they normally put in the background of stuff. So it really didn't take that much away from it, but I would prefer that they don't. If we're just trying to have a raw interview with someone, it's unnecessary to do all that stuff. But um, what the hell do I know, right? Um, so what are some of the things he talked about? Winning the X Division Championship, talked about the Rascals a little bit, so it was good to name drop them because it's real. That's that's part of his story. And he talks about shedding tears with those guys after he won the title, realizing that they weren't there anymore. So the um, good stuff right there. you know. And all this stuff is very quick. This is a 15-minute interview. We're not sitting through some long 30, 40 minute segment. It's just a f quick 15 minute interview, quick and to the point. Talked about Steve Macklin and their feud a little bit, peeled back that curtain just to say, you know, Macklin is a dude that he didn't get a lot of opportunity before he came here. Him and I bring out the best in each other. Hope we continue to work forward in the future. I don't know why Macklin isn't on the damn slam anniversary card. If they put him in that damn reverse battle royal, that's uh, very much beneath him in my opinion. But again, what the hell do I know? He talked about getting a uh, emergency root canal and having a broken hand, and it, sound, it sounded like it was after it won, he won the X Division Championships. So that makes sense when he was on television, and Ace Austin and Mike Bailey were having the whole feud without him, and he was he did a little bit of backstage stuff, but he didn't get in the ring. He was he, so he had no momentum whatsoever going into their match, and then he lost the belt. So I think that really hurt him. So with Slam Anniversary and Ultimate X. Really, he needs the win. I think he needs the win. I just don't think he's going to. They're going to keep things going with Ace Austin. But it would make sense if he won, especially doing this interview segment. Um, he lost his mother to breast cancer. He talked about this. And that let us know that that Trey's mom segment that we got on TV a while back wasn't real. And that was some good television with him and Ace Austin. His real mom, he has no connection with. Um... His best friend's mom is the one who raised him that he says he views as a mother, as a mother figure in every way that his mom should have been. So I, I wasn't aware of all that. You know, I guess I just missed that on social media that he had lost her to breast cancer. He talked about his tights, how they were designed in honor of her and all that. So that was a really good and the story there too. Again, I keep using his words to connect with the wrestler, to connect with Trey Miguel. He talked about releasing music on social media and doing music since he was 12. I didn't know that he rapped, um, so I'm going to have to check out his social media, see what he's doing, and uh, I don't know, maybe I'll give you my thoughts on that, but i um, very curious to hear all that, but um, that's something I can I can relate to, uh, prioritizing something like that at a young age over schoolwork, and he didn't finish high school, ended up getting his GED after he won the X Division Championship. I mean, that's wild. That That's something about him, like... Who, who knew, you know, uh, that he would just not complete high school. He was doing online school. That didn't really work out for him. And then, you know, gets his GED. So that's awesome. Congratulations to him uh, for finally accomplishing that. And then he talked a little bit about Ace Austin. And he doesn't have a good track record with Ace Austin, especially when the X Division title was on the line. So there's going to be some long-term storytelling there that where he, you know, hopefully eventually beats Ace Austin for the belt. You know, and, and I think it's going to uh, get over a lot more than had he won it just normal. But we're happy to see Trey Miguel in Impact Wrestling. The Rascals had left. I didn't like the Rascals as a team. I like him a lot. As a solo, he has one of the best theme songs, best entrances, and it's good stuff. So Impact Wrestling, keep this stuff going on your channel. It is missing this kind of original content. Don't give up on it. I'm your boy BQ. I'm out. Peace.